The Newtown shootings left our nation reeling in grief and wondering what could be done to prevent this from ever happening again. Best-selling author Warren Farrell wrote an article in USA Today that offered some new ideas about this problem, including how a White House Council for Boys and Men could help. Warren joins us and expands on these ideas. Warren, thanks for being with us today to talk about the issues of the White House Council for Boys and Men. Recently, you wrote an article for the USA Today that focused on how it's time to go beyond fighting over guns to raising our sons. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, you know, I was noticing that there were 63 mass murders since the 1980s, and that 62 out of those 63 mass murders, meaning four or more people killed by somebody, um, were by boys or men. And yet the three things that we were talking about in relation to the Sandy Hook shootings was mental health issues and issues of our guns. And I do think guns and mental health issues are major players we were missing one third of the, uh, of, the, of the triangle, and that is our sons. And why is it that here we are, we have boys and girls, they're brought up in the same homes with the same family values, with the same access to guns, with the same access to violence in, in the media, with the same access to violent video games, with the same basic mental health problems. And yet we have so many, all the shootings are being done that are mass shootings, by our sons, not our daughters. So that has to be a factor we address. Yes, and do we have any idea at all why it is that it's the boys that are doing the shootings? I think we have a fair amount of an idea. One of the ideas does also apply to our daughters. Um, but we, we know that, in ch that a lot of children that get into trouble who are boys are boys without fathers. Now, girls without fathers also do a lot less, but uh, to do a lot worse as well. But when boys don't have father, the fathers, there's a tendency for them not to have a role model of where they can be when they grow up that's, that is positive. When they only see Homer Simpsons on TV, when they have the old image that when I grew up was father knows best. But now with Homer Simpsons and um, you know, Modern Family and Al Bundy's and Archie Bunker's, there's, there's just a feeling of fathers know less and fathers are jerks, or fathers are bumbling idiots. And when you also don't have a father yourself, you don't see an alternative to that image. And so you're, so boys are feeling particularly lost. Uh, when fathers are involved in a family in a deep way, a boy sees a sense of purpose for himself when he gets older. And he also learns, as do daughters, postpone gratification. Dads are a lot more likely to set boundaries very tightly. And people who have boundaries set learn to perform by finishing up their peas before they have their ice cream, let's say. And the result of that is that they, they learn to have postponed gratification. Without postponed gratification, they tend not to be able to accomplish goals. When boys don't accomplish goals, we feel like a failure. And so that even more so than girls do. And so that leaves boys with a, a sense of shame and a sense of, um, of depression um, that is even deeper than it is for many girls without fathers. Yeah. And how do you think a White House Council for Boys and Men might help all this? Well, there are a lot of causes besides fathers. There's um, causes such as the phthalate, that, that is plastics in our water leach phthalate that, that increase um, the amount of estrogen and decrease the amount of testosterone. So now if you, ha if you looked into that, you'd be, be talking about the environmental portion of the government. If you looked into the fatherless issue, you'd be talking about HHS, Health and Human Services portion. If you looked at what the schools could do to be more boy friendly, you'd be looking at the education um, portion of our schools. So when you have multi, so if you took a, um, an effort to work on boys and men and you put, put the, that effort into any one department, say the Department of Education, they would tend to under focus on the issues of mental health and suicide. If you put it in the mental health and suicide portions of the government, they would tend to neglect the environment or the education portions. The White House is the only portion that looks that could take the nine major causes uh, that I uh, discern of the boy crisis and begin to articulate uh, and, and begin to balance um, how each of those 
can be become part of a strategy that can be coordinated rather than just put into one department that becomes territorial. Mm -hmm. Yes. And one more question. Why do you think it is that issues around girls and women seem to get more airtime and they seem to get more services than issues around boys and men? Because historically and biologically, the moment something happens to a girl or a woman, boys and men get the love of women and girls by competing to solve the problem. Um, so the man on the white horse found a damsel in distress. The damsel in distress was the signal that we served a purpose. And then we all competed with the other men on white horses or semi-white horses to be the man whose horse was seen as the white horse that saved him. Saved him. We got our love, we got our attention, we got our affection, we got our praise from other men, we got our legendary status in history by serving women and competing to serve women, which is why a feeling that a patriarchy means that men make rules to benefit men at the expense of women completely misses the understanding of the goal of men and, men and boys in, in our lives, which is to be able to, uh, to be of service and to women and to get women who love to love us. Yeah. Well, Warren, I have a, a question too. I, I not only see this as <clears throat> addressing the issues of boys, and the absence of the community of men looking out for these boys because mm -hmm. in many of these cases where were the men around them going there's something wrong with this boy why don't we speak up why don't we reach you that that boy should not have a gun you know there's something mm -hmm. wrong mm -hmm. so yes. I'd like you to talk about that community when you have a system working with mature men actively in the community as well, they're almost the watchdogs to make sure everyone's safe. Would you, you mention that and then I have one other question. Absolutely. First of all, this, this idea of, of men in the community, whether it's through Boy Scouts or the Boys Clubs, um, it need to all be participants in the mentorship and the parenting of our sons. We need to encourage fathers back into the family and give incentives for fathers to be involved in the family rather than not be involved. But then in the school system, we need a, 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 a four-level mentorship program. In the school system, there should always, every boy should have a boy who's older than he mentoring him. Every boy should have a boy that's younger than he that he mentors. Every boy should have a peer male that is a buddy of his, uh, that, that they watch out for each other that, as you do in a buddy system in camp when you're swimming and every boy should have a peer female that is a buddy also. So the boy learns in kindergarten and first grade that girls are not just for sex, they are for, they can be buddies, they can be peers, they can have, that there can be healthy relationships between them that is that are established on that helping each other level before they get into puberty and only see uh, the sexual dimensions of each other. And the other piece with this is the, the simple fact of the White House being one of the higher authorities in our culture bringing attention to this will, will address it for the entire conversation of men in the community, right? Yes, this is such an important point that you're bringing up, Martin, because the moment President Obama were to say there is a crisis concerning boys and men, we need foundations to be offering research grants. We need universities to be paying attention to this. We need private businesses to be involved in the process of helping, working with the community colleges to help, help the community colleges determine what types of things can be done to address robotics in the future or the blueprint, reading of blueprint designs in the future. There is a place for every portion of our society to be involved in the reaching out to boys and men in the same way that it was involved in the reaching out to girls and women that have helped girls and women make such enormous progress in the last 30 years. We need to do that same amount, not just by the government, but the government catalyzing the process that involves private industry, um, foundations, nonprofits, and a government agency. But the government is the best coordinator of the strategy to inspire the involvement um, of all elements of society. And the last piece, Tom, is just the background conversation I meet, even being on a, a little talk show recently, is the idea of explaining how 
uh, if we do this for boys, how we're adding to girls, adding to women, not taking something away, Warren, because I think that's the, the constant reaction is, oh my gosh, if we help one, we've got to take away from the other, but it's critical. Yes, this help one, this win-lose or zero-sum game, as academics call it, mentality, was some might have been accurate for the upper class versus the lower class. It might have been accurate for um, whites versus blacks for uh, in a civil rights paradigm. But the family is very different. In the family, when one, when either gender loses, our sister or our brother, then both genders lose. Women are looking for competent men to marry. When when men are not competent, women don't marry. When women don't marry, they have children out of wedlock, and when those children out of wedlock do worse. When children do worse, mothers are depressed, just like fathers are depressed. The, the, there's a, either a win-win with the family. When either sex loses, the family boat sinks. Thanks, Tom. I'll let you wrap it up. Appreciate it for my I, questions. I appreciate your time today, Warren and Martin. It's been an interesting time, and uh, we'll look forward to more of this in the future. Thank you all. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, Martin.